عزيزتي كيتي لماذا يجب أن تنفق الملايين يومياً على الحروب ولا ينفق أي قرش على الخدمات الطبية أو الفن أو حتى على الناس الفقراء؟ لماذا بعض الناس يتدورون ويموتون جوعاً وفي الوقت الذي يوجد فيه زيادة وفائض في مناطق أخرى من هذا العالم؟ آه، لماذا الناس مجانين إلى هذا الحد؟ Powerful stuff, and the gentleman behind you you're about to meet on camera. Uh, we welcome back uh, Stephen Ollendorf, who is the founder of the Ollendorf Center for Religious and Human Understanding, and uh, Yaakov Sedler, who is a filmmaker of uh, Anne Frank then and now. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. It's our pleasure. Um, Stephen, set the context for this film. Describe it. Anne Frank then and now, and the key words of then and now is the story of Anne Frank and her thoughts while being in a home during World War II, and now is how her words relate to the most extreme opposite that you could think of, Palestinian girls reading from Anne Frank and how it relates to their lives. And the amazing thing is the commonality of their thoughts, mm. their mutual desires, um, especially I was astounded by the Palestinian girls who nothing more wanted education, mm. they wanted security, they wanted the freedom to be their own people. And in a way, this film is not only dedicated to the Palestinian girls, but the girls all around the world who want to be emancipated. And the Ollendorf uh, Center uh, behind this, and it's committed to the continuing work that you're doing. Yaakov, let me ask you, how difficult was it to make this film? It was very difficult. I, I did a lot of, uh, I can say difficult stuff, but uh, this is the most difficult part of Why? my life. Uh, be, at first, uh, uh, because of, of locations, uh, we, we filmed in Ramallah and in Gaza. During filming, last day, uh, war started in Gaza. And uh, last shots, what we did, uh, came uh, immediately, in, 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 in the meantime of bombarding of uh, everything what's, what's happened there. Uh, it was casefully, we didn't know that, uh, but, uh, you know, but it was, for me, it was really, really amazing experience. At first, uh, of the fact that this is for, for the very first time uh, Anne Frank will uh, perform in, uh, in Arabic language. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, for me it was a great opportunity to, uh, to film with uh, Branko Lustig. Branko Lustig produced this film together with uh, Mr. Ollendorf and me. Branko Lustig uh, is a Holocaust survivor. Right. And, uh, he received two Oscars for uh, Schindler's List and uh, for Gladiator. He did Schindler's List, Gladiator. Uh, Gladiator, and, but what is important for this film, uh, he testified that he was at the same time in Bergen-Belsen concentration camp together with Anne Frank. And uh, we filmed him uh, in Bergen-Belsen and he told us the whole story. It's amazing. You know what, for those who don't know, and I, I never want to assume, uh, I hate to say the Reader's Digest version, the public television version is much longer. Um, but let me ask you this, for those who don't know, why Anne Frank, who was Anne Frank and why is her story significant? Well, there are many stories of the Holocaust and somehow Anne Frank is the one that is the symbol of the Holocaust of a young girl who wrote a diary and her thoughts during the process. And uh, some of her thoughts are truly amazing. A lot of it is just day-to-day -day routine stuff, but... Some of it is not routine at all. And some of it is her thoughts are so incredible her thoughts about every day when you go to bed, you should think, how did, what did you do to make the world a better place? Uh, her thoughts about religion, her thoughts about, about war, about war, about poverty, about why are they spending money on guns. I mean, I was telling Yaakov before, if you took these Palestinian girls and Anne Frank in a room, and they could negotiate a better deal for the world than what we have today. Yaakov, it's then and now, and Frank, then and now. Is it even more important now than ever before? I think so. I think so. Uh, look, I'll tell you something. Um, for me, it was a huge surprise that those girls uh, who, uh, who uh, told Anna Frank uh, story, they never heard. Never heard it. Never heard. Did they know there was an Anne Frank? No, no. They, they know. Uh, they knew what Holocaust is. Some of them, yes, but basically they doesn't know any details, and they never heard about Anne Frank. What do you think they took away from it? Uh, politics, I think. You know, just uh, and, and, uh, and. What do you think they took away from the from her story? Uh, from her story, uh, I think. Uh, 
uh, they took uh, maybe one of the most famous uh, part of Anne Frank is that uh, the, when, she, when she told the story that uh, she believed that world and people are good. I think this is something what catches them really. So she's in the. I mean, this is so almost impossible for, for many people to comprehend. So Stephen, she's in, she's ex ex dealing with this extraordinarily impossible, horrible situation, right? And she says, at the core, people are good. She says, she says very many uh, profound things, and what was amazing is how much these Palestinian girls related to her thoughts. But, but Anne Frank was just incredible and said, she even talked about religion. She talked about why, because one of the problems we're dealing with today is how few people can influence the world, but the, and how powerless so many people are to change the world. And she raises that question. She raises a question. She understands that it's, it's everyone can believe in God in their own way, but I want to be Jewish. Why should I be eliminated? Why can't I have my thoughts? Why can't I think the way I do and other people can think the way they do? Because it's a blessing to believe in something. And I think the Palestinian girls really believe in the exact same thing. In fact, in the film itself, I'm sometimes amazed at some of the statements they made. In fact, I told Yaakov, some of these statements, are, they, are these girls going to get in trouble? Because I don't want to make a film where they could get in, where there would be repercussions. And before we released the film, we had to get assurances that they would not get into trouble. That they were protected. That they were protected. Wow. Yeah, uh, they didn't care about anything. Just, just They're not afraid. No. They no. were brave. Uh, they're brave. Uh, look, uh, they, they didn't find in, in this book anything against um, anybody or anything. J right. Just, just the, uh, uh, the, the... It wasn't against Islam. No, no, no. Uh, but uh, uh, only uh, what they took from, from this book is something good and something positive. And uh, uh, one girl... She told me at the end, uh, this book inspired me to, uh, to start to uh, write my own diary. Really? Yes. So she said, I want to write my own diary because... Yes, yes. Because of this book. It, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a, a direct influence of uh, this feeling. It you was know, in Gaza. You, it was in Gaza. Yes. And, uh, finally, you know that both of you have made a difference. Well, we'll see. But we'll, see. <laughs> well, we'll see one thing very quickly is... This film also discusses relationships with Israel, mm. how they feel about Israel. One of them was bold enough to talk about ISIS. And I mean, these were very bold girls, very bold girls. Well, the film is uh, Anne Frank then and now. Um, our friend Stephen Ollendorf has been talking to us about this for the last couple of years, and he brought you to us. So thank you for that. Thank you for introducing us to the film, and uh, thank you for introducing the public television, the Files family, to uh, this important information. And uh, Stephen and Yaakov, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Stay you. with us. We'll be right back.